us uh, and let other people know, uh, especially uh, those in the WhatsApp groups, just share that we are live. Okay, awesome. Um, so um, I want to kick this off. Once again, welcome to our first ever uh, Accra Tableau user group. Um, this has taken some months of planning and we are finally here and we are really, really excited uh, that we can finally do this and have some amazing people uh, speak to us. Um, so uh, before we start off, I want to quickly um, talk about our leadership and give a brief introduction uh, about ourselves. Um, so my name is Lawe Akrofi. Um, I'm a Tableau developer. I'm mostly freelance. Uh, and right now I consult for a company based in Arlington called Johanna Data Solutions. Um, I've been in the data space for about four years now and uh, still learning uh, Tableau. Uh, anyway, so that's a little bit about myself. Um, most of you have already uh, know about me through our conversations on LinkedIn or WhatsApp. Um, so, um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I'll hand over to um, Philip. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself as well? Yeah, thank you, Lawe. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning, good evening, wherever you are. And my name is Philip Okompa, and I'm also a, a leader of this group. And I'm the senior data analyst at Big Data Ghana Limited. So at Big Data Ghana Limited, we help companies and institutions to make sense of out of their data. And I happen to use a lot of, um, I happen to use Tableau most of the time. And I'm also a data enthusiast. I like data a lot and I like working with data. So that's a little about me. Okay, so uh, leader as well, who is Kofi Ochi, also a Tableau developer, and uh, he worked as um, a developer for a company called BS Systems. Uh, right now, he does a lot of freelance work as well. So I think towards the end, maybe he will speak uh, at the session. So let me quickly uh, talk about the goals of our community. Um, so we formed this group, uh, myself, Philip, and Kofi. Uh, we wanted to teach a newcomer's Tableau because uh, there's not a lot of uh, people using the software uh, here in Ghana. Um, so that's one of the, the main goals to, to teach people um, about Tableau. The next one is to allow people to collaborate and network. Um, so you can find uh, these little co collaborations with other people. You want to work on a project, a Makeover Monday project or something else in the community, you can collaborate uh, with people. And then the other thing is we want to create a community. Um, so that's um, the, some of the goals of our community. Um, so let me quickly jump into our agenda for today. And I'm sure most of you have already seen this online. Um, we have uh, Sarah Bartlett and Tuan Huang today with us. Uh, these are amazing people in our Tableau community. They are, are celebrities in Tableau, in the Tableau community. So uh, we are really honored to have them today. So they are going to be walking us through a little bit of their Tableau journeys. A lot of you had questions about how to get started in Tableau and how to become really good in Tableau. So we are going to hear from them and then we, there's a lot to learn from them. So uh, that's our agenda for today. Um, so I will quickly jump into uh, introducing our first uh, guest today. Um, so the first guest for today is Sarah. Um, Sarah is a BI and analytics consultant at uh, Slalom. She's a Tableau Zen master and she's a three-time uh, social ambassador for Tableau. Um, so that's really awesome. She's also the uh, co-leader of the London Tableau user group and the founder of IronQuest. And also she runs the blog, uh, Sarah Large Data. Uh, so with that, I will hand over to Sarah and um, Sarah, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Thank you for the great introduction. Um, awesome. Let me just share my screen. Can you just confirm that you can see my slides okay? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, brilliant. All right, so 
today uh, Lawyer and Philip asked me to talk about like my journey so far um, and just share some tips on to help you become better with Tableau. Um, so just quick introduction, I think you've covered all of that already, so I won't go for it again, uh, but I'll share my contact details at the end um, if anyone wants to reach out to me. Um, in terms of my background, I've been working in analytics roles for the last 12 years, um, but only the last six years have I been working with Tableau. Uh, prior to Tableau, a lot of what I did was purely in Excel, um, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but for the last three years, I've been working in consulting, and, and two of those have been working with Slalom in London. Um, I'm Tableau certified on Tableau Desktop. I got my certified associate qualification in 2018. I got my professional last year and then also last year I founded IronQuest in January and I'll explain more about what that is shortly. Um, so I do a lot of work on Tableau Public. I think I've got around about 155 visualizations on there now. Uh, this is just a few of them, um, some of the ones I'm most proud of. Um, but I, I really enjoy just using Tableau uh, both inside and outside of work. I, I think it's great fun and you can learn so much and there's, a, there's an amazing community out there of people that you can network with and, and learn from um, and that's partly why I've been using it so long. So in terms of my journey so far, um, before Tableau a lot of the work that I did looked something like this. Now this isn't actually my um, report, it's something I found on Google but I, I was doing a lot of work in Excel, building dashboards. Um, I worked for a company where I was looking at data tracking like the number of jobs that have been reported in terms of like facilities management problems so broken lights or someone reported to clean up a coffee spill on the carpet and things like that um, and I was tracking all that in Excel and um, there was nothing particularly sophisticated about the work I was doing at the time uh, but then the we had a new head of BI join the company I was working at and he had used Tableau at a previous company and he said that all of the analysts in the organization needed to learn Tableau and at the time I didn't know what Tableau was never heard of it uh, but they were offering me a two-day training course to for free to go and attend and learn all about Tableau um, so I was really excited for that um, and I attended the two-day training course and I was just blown away. I was so excited to go back to work and use Tableau and I thought, you know, it can do all this cool stuff, you can build maps and I can do all this kind of stuff and it'll be really fun. Um, but I got back to work and I quickly realized that although I'd had the training, I was really struggling to apply uh, what I'd learned in my training to my day job and I very much felt like this and so I quickly went from loving Tableau to absolutely hating it. Um, there was nobody with me in my organization uh, in my office to support me so I was the only one that, that had learned Tableau at the time. Um, there was, wasn't really much of a community uh, where I worked and so I didn't really adopt it as quickly as I would have liked to and so that was uh, back in about November 2014 and to be honest, in 2015, I didn't do anything in Tableau. Um, I avoided it and got involved in other projects at work um, and did less data visualization work and more like project work on other things. Uh, but then it was always in the back of my mind to go back to it. Like I, I knew it was good and I, I knew that it could help me. Um, so at the beginning of 2015, I started to get more involved uh, in the community. Now, during my training session, I'd been introduced to Andy Kriebel's blog, bizwiz.com, um, and I was recommended that by the person who trained me. Um, so I had a look at his blog, and he's got over a thousand tutorials on there, um, and I found that really helpful. So I, I used those tutorials to help me get started and, oops, uh, and learn um, some you know, how to actually use Tableau and help overcome some of those challenges I was facing when I first started out. Now, coincidentally, at the same time, uh, Andy, and back then it was Andy Cockgreave as well, uh, launched a project called Make of a Monday. So I actually got involved in Make of a Monday, I think it was week nine of the first of a year, um, and then consistently participated throughout that year. Um, I also got involved in Viz for Social Good, uh, so that's a project where you go away and you visualize data for charities or NGOs. And that had just started at the same time. It was founded by Chloe Sen. Um, so I got involved in that. That's one of the visualizations there on homelessness was something I did for Viz for Social Good early in my career. Uh, but I found it was really good to actually use these projects as a way of practicing um, and then taking those skills I was learning while I was practicing back to work and applying um, to the dashboards I was using, uh, building for clients. 
if you haven't heard of Makeup of Monday before, um, just to give you a quick idea of what it is, it's a project that runs every week. It, it's currently run by Eva Murray and Charlie Hutchinson. And every Sunday they publish a data set that's linked to a visualization they've seen somewhere that's perhaps not the best visualization and, and could be improved. And in this example, that would be the visualization on the left. And then the community go away um, and take that data and make something better. Uh, at the end of the week, they showcase some of the favorites from that week. Um, so the visualizations you see on the right are the same data, but visualized in a different way. And I found just by participating in this project week after week, I was improving my skills. I was learning so much about data visualization. Um, I was also able to network with different people that were taking part as well. Um, and we could like bounce ideas off each other and share feedback. Um, and I just think the whole process is so beneficial. And I've seen so many people really grow their skills and, and career from participating in this project. So I'd highly recommend checking it out. Um, in terms of where I started, so I was really apprehensive about sharing my first uh, Make of a Monday visualization. Uh, so this was my viz that I did. Um, it's incredibly basic, um, but I, I almost didn't publish it. Uh, this is my first ever Tableau Public Viz and I knew you had to publish it and then share it on social media, um, so on Twitter. Um, but I was really scared. I didn't really know anybody in the community and I thought people might tell me I'd done something wrong or that it wasn't very good. Um, so I, I almost didn't publish it, but I did. Um, and it, everything was okay. Nobody said anything. Um, so I participated again the next week. But in my opinion, I, my, I probably got worse. So this is my second ever Viz. Um, and at the time I thought this was really good. Uh, thankfully I've since learned that it's not so great, um, but I, I just kind of over-engineered the whole visualization and tried to make it fun when it was unnecessary. Um, but at the end of the day, I actually, I learned a lot by building this. So you know, from that perspective, I guess it was, it was good for me. Now, just, um, just so you know, this, this visualization actually features in the Make of a Monday book. So page 17, it's one of the first visualizations you see. So I never would have thought that that visualization would make it into print. Out of all the ones that I've done, it had to be that one. Um, so it's there forever um, to, to haunt me. Um, but thankfully, I've learned a lot since then. So my most recent visualization was one that I did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, again, this was a Make of a Monday. Um, and it was looking at uh, tech companies in Scotland. Um, and I used a combination of Tableau and Figma uh, to build like, the design elements, uh, which is a free tool if you're interested. Um, and so when I was preparing for this talk today, uh, Philip and, and Lawyer asked me to you know, talk about my journey. So just in terms of some of the things I've achieved since I've really been involved in the community, um, I've listed them all here. Um, with just some of the major ones, but I didn't really start getting involved in the community properly until mid to late 2016. Um, I actually won a ticket to attend the Tableau conference in Austin, Texas. Uh, so I, I attended that conference and got to meet so many people in the community. Um, it was just an amazing experience and, and that inspired me to actually start a blog where first of all, I actually my first post is where I write about that conference and my experience there. Um, at the beginning of the year, I did my first Tableau public viz as well. And then at the very end of the year, I was invited to join the leadership team for the London Tableau user group, which I'm still part of. Um, and that was just, uh, you know, an amazing opportunity for me. It was too good to turn down. Uh, 2017 was much more quiet. I, I focused purely in 2017 on improving my skills, doing lots of Makeover Mondays, participating in other projects as well. Um, and then 2018, I entered IMVIS Europe. So this is my first ever IMVIS entry and actually made it into the final, which meant I had to um, produce a visualization on stage in front of about 4,000 people in 20 minutes. Um, so that was a really fun experience. Um, that was the same year I became a Tableau ambassador. Um, I won the Community Leader Award at the Vizies at the conference that year. Um, and I also spoke at the conference. Um, in 2019, uh, at the beginning of the year, I, I founded IronQuest, uh, which is a project based upon the principles of IronViz and the IronViz feeders um, specifically. That was inspired by my experience in IronViz Europe the previous year. Um, I joined the, MIS, the Vake of a Monday Viz Review team with Eva for about six months last year. So I helped provide feedback to people that were participating in Make of a Monday every week. I was lucky enough to be an IronViz first round judge uh, last year. Um, I spoke at the conference again, and I also won the EMEA Tableau Partner Data for Good Award um, in, in recognition of all the things I do in the community. 
Um, now this year has been a little bit different to what I expected it to be. Um, obviously uh, they, there have been no conferences in person uh, but in February I was lucky enough to be selected as a Tableau Zen Master which was incredible um, and I've also been a Ironviz judge this year and I co-founded the Data Fam Community Jam which is a series of virtual events that we've been running since the beginning of April uh, during the lockdown period to help connect the community around the world. So we're actually running the 11th edition this Friday where we'll announce the Ironviz results live. So that will be tomorrow. So if you're interested, um, check out the links I've shared on social media because it will be a fun event. But I'm really lucky to have had this experience. Like, it's been incredible. Um, this is just a few pictures from my journey so far. Um, I've met so many people just by participating in the community and had all these great experiences. So I'd highly, highly recommend uh, getting involved. Um, don't be afraid like I was to, to participate. So if you're wondering why you should learn Tableau, um, like why, why bother, like why, why Tableau and not another tool? I would say that you know, data skills are in demand. Um, and if you look at the jobs um, on job sites such as LinkedIn, you'll see there's a lot of jobs going for and looking for people that have data skills. Um, also, Tableau is a market leading visualization software. So if you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrants that come out once a year, um, you'll notice that Tableau is always one of the leaders in the top right quadrant, um, very close to Power BI. Um, Tableau is industry agnostic, so you can use it anywhere on any data. It's, I generally think it's easy to learn, despite my problems at the beginning. I think once you understand the basics, it's very easy to pick up and learn from there. And it's fun to use as well. I think that, and that's a key differentiator for me. It has a free open source version, so you can use Tableau Public for free and publish on Tableau Public for free if you're using open source data. But the key differentiator for me apart, that sets it apart from other tools is the Tableau community, which is just really unique and amazing. So. If you're thinking about your data visualization skills, um, there's, I see it as a triangle where you have data, tools, and design. And these are all essential to be good at data visualization. So if we talk about data, I think all these skills are complementary to how you would use Tableau. So it's helpful to understand how to collect data, how to wrangle it, how to clean it, how to structure it properly so it works effectively with Tableau. It's also beneficial to have an understanding of statistics and basic statistical concepts and also the ability to evaluate hypothesis and tell a story with data. And if you understand all those things, you know, you'll you, you'd be able to effectively take data and put it into Tableau. Um, you may be wondering why I have design there, um, but design, I think, is really important because that's where you can actually, you know, showcase your data in, in an effective way um, and, and make, make your work look uh, well presented and um, so I think it's important to understand design principles such as layouts so and how to lay out a dashboard effectively the right fonts to use the right colors to use and understand any uh, how to overcome things like people with color deficiencies and also under have a basic understanding of UX and UI and how things should be laid out so they, they work effectively and can be easy, easy, used easily and then obviously it's important that we understand the tools that we use, whether that be Tableau, Power BI, Excel. Um, some people use code, so like maybe SQL, D3, Python or R. Um, these are all complementary skills um, if you want to be like a good analyst uh, using Tableau. And I see pen and paper as being one of those skills as well, because quite often I'll draw my designs out on paper before actually putting them into Tableau. So to help you on your journey, um, there's a couple of steps I'm going to go through that hopefully inspire you and give you some ideas of where to get started so the first step would be to go away and master the basics this is really important and um, you really need to get those foundations in place and understand the foundations before doing the more advanced stuff uh, thankfully there's a lot of free training resources out there so i will say apart from the two-day training course i did at the very beginning of my journey i've never paid for any tableau training everything has been free and um, available online to everybody um, so first place I'll go if I was looking for free training would be the Tableau website where they have some training videos um, they essentially cover everything you'd need to know about how to use Tableau um, in bite-sized chunks and most of the videos are between four and six minutes long um, and you can just pick and choose out of those there's Tableau e-learning as well now that is paid for um, they did run a promotion earlier this year where it was free for a, a short period but it generally speaking it is paid for um, but on the Tableau e-learning you have tailored learning journeys to the types of roles you might be doing when working with Tableau whether that be like an analyst a data scientist 
a community leader, they will tailor those those e-learning modules to the kind of things that you'll need to know in those roles. Um, so it's different to the training you'd find on the website, um, perhaps less technical, but you'll still understand the technicalities by, by completing that training. Um, the Tableau Student Guide uh, is a guide that was set up by Maria Brock, who was a Tableau Student Ambassador last year. Um, this is a great place to start just to understand how to get started both with understanding the basics, getting involved in the community and things like that. Um, and then if you want to understand more about other tools such as Python, R, SQL, DataCamp and FreeCodeCamp are great places to go where it's entirely free and you can take courses on there in those. Um, everyone has a different learning style. So if you'd rather at attend a formal training class, probably not in person right now, but um, maybe one that's led virtually, you can get some of these, but they tend to be paid for. So maybe you might attend a class on something like Udemy or LinkedIn Learning where it's self-paced and you complete different modules. They're really good as well. Um, perhaps you might attend training at work or even via a user group like this one. Um, and while you're learning the basics, I think it's really important to learn the best practices of data visualization um, you know understanding how to, to display data effectively and uh, and almost like tell a data story uh, a good place to get started with understanding this is the storytelling with data website and specifically the community so this is run by a lady called Cole Nussbaum and Nathlik. she's the author of the book storytelling with data and she runs a free online community where you can go and take part in challenges to improve your data skills and get feedback on your work participate in conversations about data I mean you name it it's all there so I highly recommend uh, you go and check that out now once you've mastered the basics it's really important to practice and the great thing about the Tableau community is there's plenty of opportunities uh, to practice your skills and um, so if you want to practice I so said the first thing to do is you know get Tableau public uh, and set up a profile on there it's, it's entirely free um, and then cho choose some projects uh, from like the list below that these are the these are the main ones you'll find in the community um, and I think it's good to choose a combination of projects from both small scale so things like make of a Monday which are quick you could do them in an hour or two and some larger projects so maybe things like biz for social good or iron quest where you know it'll take you longer to kind of complete the project end to end um, just to give you a quick overview of what these projects are, I've spoken about Make of a Monday already. Um, Iron Quest is a project that I founded last year uh, where every month we visualise a different topic um, and we focus our tr trying to improve our skills in data uh, storytelling, design and analysis, which are the scoring criteria for Iron Viz. Um, you can find out more about that on my blog if you're interested. Uh, there's Project Health Viz, which was founded by Lindsay Betzendahl, uh, which is a monthly project where every month you'll publish a different data set on a health topic and you have a month to complete it. There's Sports Viz Sunday, uh, which where every month they publish a different sports related data set. So often every month is a different sport and you can go away and visualize that data set or really any sports data set that you wish. Um, and you'd share that on social media with the hashtag Sports Viz Sunday. Uh, this for social good I mentioned already, which is one working with NGOs and charities. And then there's Workout Wednesday, which is almost the opposite of Makeup and Monday. But with Workout Wednesday, they publish a completed visualization every Wednesday. Uh, and the idea is, is that you try to rebuild it without looking at, at how it was built. Um, this is a more advanced uh, challenge, but I guarantee you will learn uh, lots of new tips and tricks by participating. Um, and then at the end of the week, they actually publish a video that, that shows how the visualization was built from the beginning to end. So you can learn about all the calculations that were used and different tips and tricks that are applied to, to get that end result. Um, so highly recommend checking that out as well. Uh, so tip number three would be to learn how to ask the right questions of your data. And this might seem like a funny tip, um, but I think it's really important that we understand, you know, how to question our data and understand things like, is our data source trustworthy? Uh, understanding if our data is complete um, and understanding if we have the right data to answer the questions that we're looking to answer. Um, and it's really important we understand the limits of our data as well. And if you're interested in learning like, more about this and how to avoid kind of making mistakes in this area, there's two books I'd like to recommend. So there's the How Charts Lie by Alberto Cairo, which talks about how charts can be sometimes be deceiving, uh, even if they're not intended to be and Avoiding Data Pitfalls by Ben Jones, which looks at the pitfalls that analysts uh, commonly like, find themselves in um, and how to avoid them. So highly recommend checking those out.
Uh, tip number four would be to study design fundamentals. Um, so I've touched on this already all around like learning database best practices, but when I say design fundamentals, I'm not, I'm not talking web design or graphic design um, because these don't always apply to database exactly in the same way you may expect. But it's really important that we understand like what good design looks like in the case of data visualization. Uh, there's a couple of resources that I'd like to recommend here. I won't go through all of them. I'll share the slides at the end um, and you can go away and have a look. But uh, one of my favorite books is Storytelling with Data by uh, Cole Nussbaum and Nafflick. Um, there's a big book of dashboards by Steve Rexler, Jeffrey Schaefer and Andy Cockgreave, which is essentially a book full of about 25 dashboards, many of which are build, built in Tableau, which will give you lots of inspiration on what good looks like and, and how to build effective dashboards in Tableau. Um, there's a blog by Sam Parsons, uh, who's a member of the Tableau community called Reflections in Design, um, where he's writing about what, what good design looks like in the concept of data visualization as well. So they're all great things to, to go and check out. Um, tip number five would be to publish your work. So it's really good that you're doing the work, but please share it and publish it and let other people see it. Um, this is one thing that I was afraid to do, and uh, please don't be like me. <laughs> um, it's really good to share your work on social media. Uh, you'll find in the Tableau community, a lot of people share their work on Twitter um, and on LinkedIn as well. I've, I've even seen people share their work on Instagram and Pinterest, if, if that's your thing. Um, but just try and get your work out there and get people seeing it. Um, it's really good to try and seek feedback as well. And there's a couple of ways you can do this in the Tableau community. Um, so if you're participating in Make of a Monday, you can submit your visualization for Viz Review, which usually takes place on a Wednesday. Um, and then during Viz Review, the, your Viz will be reviewed by Eva and Charlie, um, and they'll give you some tips you know, on, on how to improve it and make it better. Um, and the idea of all these feedback initiatives is that you, you, know, you take the feedback and then you go away and work upon it i mean you don't have to take all of the, the feedback on board but you know try and be fair and, and consider the feedback that you've been given um, there's a new initiative that was started a couple of weeks ago called data fam feedback this was founded by sam parsons and the idea of this is that you can share a visualization it doesn't have to be for make of a monday it can be for anything um, you share it with the hashtag on twitter data fam feedback and and that's almost like a flag to say that you'd like feedback and then somebody from the community will get back to you um, and there's also a special feedback channel on the, the Storytelling with Data community. So again, you can share any visualization you like on there um, and request feedback from data visualization experts for free, which is, which is really great. And um, the good thing about publishing your work to Tableau Public is you'll build out a portfolio. So as I said at the beginning, I've managed to, uh, I think, get up to about 155 visualizations on my Tableau Public portfolio, which is fantastic. I've still got those terrible ones from the beginning of my uh, career, but it, it really shows if you scroll through like my progression and how my skills have changed and evolved over time. And um, so it's really nice to be able to look back at that. And it's really good to have this if you're considering like a, you know, a career in data visualization, because if you apply for a job, you can show your Tableau public profile to prospective employers or managers and really showcase your work and what you can do rather than just relying on word of mouth and saying, yes, I'm, you know, I'm good at data viz. You actually have something to back up what you're saying. Um, if you are considering, you know, making a career of data viz and Tableau, I'd highly recommend creating a visual CV and, and what I mean by that is actually creating a CV in Tableau of your experience and your work history to date. And this would be complementary to a traditional written CV. And there's an example here from Alex Jones, uh, who's based in London, uh, that documents his journey in a really visual way. Um, so he's showing like, his education, the kind of jobs he's done, um, his achievements in the Tableau world. Um, he's got his social media on there as well and a, and a link to his Tableau public profile. I think this is like really you know, visually appealing and be really memorable if you were applying for a job with this. Um, and I've included another example here from Maria Brock. So Maria um, recently graduated from a university in the US. And so she's got all the details about her education, um, the things she's in, interested in, her hobbies um, and her experience as well. If you are interested in creating a visual CV, there's a gallery of lots of different examples available on Tableau Public under the gallery section. So I highly recommend uh, you go to check that out. Um, so tip number six would be to engage with the community. 
the uh, first thing you could do is join a user group. So if you've here today, you've already done that. And um, perhaps you're not local to Accra or Ghana um, and you want to know if there's a user group near where you're based. Um, so if you go to usergroups.tableau.com, you can search um, based on your home city and see where the closest user groups are. But I will say, given the current situation, pretty much all the user groups around the world have gone virtual. So there's a real opportunity to join user groups from across the world that you wouldn't normally have. Um, plus most user groups recordings are actually shared on YouTube on the Tableau YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch recordings of other user groups that have taken place recently. Um, so I'd highly recommend checking that out. Um, good way of finding people in the community is by following them on Tableau Public. Uh, you can follow people, you can favorite their work. Um, you can have a look at the gallery and see who's been featured as visitor of the day and things like that. Um, by all means, join Twitter. Twitter is like where the Tableau community lives. Uh, you'll learn so much from the people on there. Um, if you do join Twitter and you don't really know where to get started, a good place to start is just by searching the hashtag well, data fan. Right? Sorry? Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so search the hashtag data fam, you'll be able to quickly find um, people to follow and, and, and get involved with. There's a data visualization society on Slack, which is free to join, um, where you can have a conversation about data visualization with lots of different professionals. Uh, they have lots of different channels on there, all different interests. So that's a really good, great place to engage in a different way. Um, if you're interested in finding a mentor or, or signing up to be a mentor, um, I'd recommend checking out mentoringmeetup.com, which is an initiative I'm involved in uh, with a few others. Um, so the idea is that we, we match up mentors with mentees and vice versa, um, all in the Tableau community. Um, so we're, we're looking for more mentors. So if you've got an intermediate understanding of Tableau, feel free to sign up. Or if you're a mentee and you're just at the beginning of your journey, then sign up and we'll match you up with somebody from the community who's got more experience and can help you on your journey. Um, and as I mentioned before, the storytelling with community is community, sorry, storytelling with data community uh, is a really great place to go if you want to practice um, and give and receive feedback as well. Um, so let's skip that one. And uh, tip number seven uh, is try and get certified. So Tableau have different uh, certification streams. Um, there's three of them, which I'll show you in a minute. But just by going through this experience myself, I found that um, getting certified was a really good way to test my knowledge and kind of fill in the gaps that I'd missed when I was learning Tableau. So much of my Tableau knowledge is self-taught. And I think by doing that, I, I missed out some key things, like perhaps there was some fun functionality that I never had to use that I, I just didn't know about. So it was really good for me to actually um, test my understanding and fill in those gaps. Um, obviously, having the certification is a really good thing to show on your um, CV and, and like on LinkedIn. Um, it can really set you apart from other people that perhaps haven't got the certification and, and just say, yes, I know how to use Tableau, but can't back that up with anything tangible. Um, and a nice uh, side as well is that if you do take the certifications, you can earn badges and T-shirts and like lots of fun free stuff as well. And for Tableau Desktop, Tableau have three certification paths. Uh, the first one is the specialist exam. Uh, so this is kind of like the entry level point. Um, it's a one hour exam made of 30 multiple choice questions. It costs $100 to, to take it, but Tableau often run um, special offers where it will be discounted. Um, and the great thing about this exam is it's valid forever. Um, the next level up is the associate. Now, if you've got more experience with Tableau, then you can start straight at the associate level. Um, it's a two hour exam, 36 multiple choice questions. It costs $250 and it's just valid for two years. Um, it is different to the specialist exam. There are some questions which are, they're still multiple choice, but you have to go and use Tableau to kind of find the answer. So there might be questions that ask you, you know, what's the profit in in the north in November and you have to actually use Tableau to find that answer um, and then if you've taken the associate it means you can also take the professional which is at the highest level this is a free hour exam it's practical 100% hands-on it's completely different to the other two um, it's quite an intense exam um, but it's you know well worth it and in that exam you'll work through a number of different uh, questions which ask you to build dashboards and stories and calculations and things like that now that one does cost a lot more um, and it, it's valid for a little bit longer at three years but again it's a great thing to have on your CV if that's something you want to pursue uh, tip number eight will be to leverage community resources 
so we have this great community rich of all this all these people that share um blog posts and videos and things like that there's just so much out there like i've only included five different links here but i could i could share hundreds and talk about this for hours um, but these are five places that i tend to go um, if i'm looking to try and understand how to do something in tableau so you've got andy creeble's blog at the top vizwiz.com which is an incredible resource like i think andy's probably blogged everything over the years about tableau so you're pretty much guaranteed to find answers to questions uh, that you're looking for there there's playfairdata.com, which is run by Ryan Sleeper, who was a, a multi like Dem master. Um, really great blog, lots of great Chablo tutorials to get you started. Um, and he has two books as well, if you're interested. There's a Flerledge Twins uh, website, which is run by Kevin and Ken Flerledge. Uh, they have lots of Tableau tutorials on their site, as well as templates to help you do more advanced chart, chart types like Sankey diagrams. Um, so you can just plug and play with your data and make it really easy to build these chart types. There's Tableau Magic, but it's run by Tuan, who's going to be speaking after me. Um, he has a fantastic site lots, with lots of tutorials on Tableau and other tools as well, um, and loads of resources to learn how to build more fun chart types. Um, so if you see you know, those radial charts and all things like that, they guarantee you find a blog on Tuan's site on how to build those. Oops, and sorry. Press the wrong button and finally sorry tableau tim has a fantastic youtube channel where he usually covers all the new features in new tableau versions and has some tutorial posts on his site as well so i'd recommend checking that out um, my last tip will be to go and teach others so it's it's good that you you know you've learned these things but to teach others really proves if you can actually if you actually have that understanding and it's solidified um, so a great way of teaching would be to start a blog or a video channel of your own. Uh, it's, I found it's really great to, you know, write about my processes or write tutorials because it really does test your understanding of a particular topic. Um, and it can be really free or inexpensive to start either of these if you're interested. Mentoring is another great way of teaching somebody. So mentoring meetup would be a perfect opportunity to get involved there. Um, you could always present at a tug or a meetup like this one. So I'm sure the leaders are looking for more presenters in the future. So perhaps you've done something in Tableau or you want to talk about one of your visualizations. You could always apply to speak at a user group, either locally or anywhere in the world at the moment. Um, it's really good to get involved on the Tableau community forums. This is where you can go and ask questions about Tableau if you get stuck. And there's a whole community of people on there that actually answer those questions. Um, but anyone could go on there and answer questions and it's a really great place to go and learn. Uh, and then perhaps you're in a team at work who of people that use Tableau. Um, I'd recommend like setting up something like a Tableau doctor session. So maybe once a month you could have a regular meeting slot where people could come along with their Tableau problems and you could try and solve them or even run lunch and learn sessions where maybe you've learned something in Tableau and you want to teach your colleagues what you've learned. And you could do that over a, a lunchtime session with them. So hopefully you found that interesting. I'm just going to recap quickly what I've gone through. Um, so my tips will be master the basics, practice regularly, ask the right questions of your data, study design fundamentals, publish your work and engage with the community, get Tableau certified, leverage community resources and teach others. Uh, so thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, um, there all my contact details are on the screen. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Uh, thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, really, really insightful uh, to get all that uh, about your start with Tableau and uh, where you are now and all the wonderful things you've done in the community. Uh, we've had, we have a, a couple of questions that came in. Uh, so the first one came from uh, Sidel Macau. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what's your creative process? How do you determine the layout for your business? Okay, hi Stel. Um, so it's different every time. So I've, I have blogged about this, but uh, depending on what I'm doing, I usually draw things out on paper, first of all. Um, I often use like post-it notes. So if you, I might draw a, a chart on a post-it note and then move it around a piece of paper because by having it on the post-it, it means you can move it around easily and like rejig the layout. Um, but more recently, I've also been using Figma. So just kind of mocking up designs in there before committing to anything in Tableau. Um, I find those, you know, really good ways to start without actually, you know, getting too involved and then having to throw everything away and start again. Awesome. Um, so another one uh, is um, uh, from Rashid. It says, what motivates you on a daily basis? 
<laughs> um, I just I enjoy using Tableau. I think it's fun. Um, I try and pick um, like topics of is that I'm interested in, uh, perhaps like music or um, you know, I, with Iron Quest, I try and pick quite fun topics. I'm currently building a viz on mythical creatures um, in like folklore, which is like really bizarre but really fun. Um, so yeah, just pick things that you're interested in, and I think um, you'll be more motivated to try and like um, get involved and in just learning things. Is, I think is motivating as well. It's always good to learn something and master something. It feels good. Okay, awesome. Um, so another question came in about. Um, I don't know if this is about Power BI. Okay. Um, so it says, how different is Tableau from Power BI? Can the skills be carried across either platforms? <laughs> and how do you envision the work? Um, env how do you envision the, the world of work is changing and how significant and relevant will data analytics skills be in the next five years? Okay, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> so I do use Power BI as well at work. Um, I think the design fundamentals and the data viz best practices and things like that, they're relevant to both tools. So it's if you understand, you know, have an understanding of data and how to display data effectively, that will help you regardless of which tool you're using. Um, they have a different learning experience. Um, so um, just the way you build charts in, in each of those tools is different. The way you connect to data is different. Um, so there's a different learning curve for both of those things. Um, but I think, you know, there's always going to be a need uh, to understand data and visualize data effectively. Like we can have machines do some things, but I think there's still going to be a human element of some sort, um, perhaps more um, on, on the data science side as well. That might be an area to pursue um, a little bit more and understand a little bit more about statistics and how to predict um, the future rather than just looking at data that's historic and what's happened already. I think it's good, a good area to try and improve your skills and is trying to forecast what might happen and how you display that data effectively as well. Um, so Rashid again says, what Tableau concept would you say was most challenging on your journey? Example level of detail calculations, data blending? Um, yeah, so probably calculations, like table calculations and getting my head around those uh, and um, LODs as well. That, I mean, maths isn't my strong area at all. So those took a little bit more work. Um, yeah, definitely calculations. The last one came from uh, Zainab. Uh, she says, uh, how do you approach challenges like Iron Quest? Um, where have you, uh, where you have to source the data, uh, especially when data is not readily available? Mm -hmm. Hey Zainab. So I think about yeah. sources of data. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes the data just doesn't exist, right? So when I was entering IronViz for the first time, I was looking for data on European cities and I just couldn't find any data that interested me. Um, and I eventually did find the data, but it was in a website that wasn't, wasn't friendly to use. And I actually had to call one of my friends to help me scrape the data using Alteryx. Um, but at the end of that process, I had a data set that I could work with, but I think I spent too much time actually looking for a, a lovely, ready to go data set um, it, in a nice format that just you know just didn't exist so often I think you know look what's out there sometimes you might have to build your data sets from scratch um, for my current iron quest that I'm working on I've actually created the data myself um, it's not something I don't believe exists um, but it's again you yeah, just try and think out of the box and think of creative ways of trying to put a data set together not just you know trying to source a data set that already exists Awesome. Um, there's one that's coming in that's a bit technical. I think this probably will go to uh, Tableau. Uh, I don't know if Sarah, you want to take it. It says, please, do you, have a, uh, do you have a plan to have special packages for SMEs in Africa? And what is the process for resellers and local partners? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be able Tableau. to answer that. That's a more Tableau question. Yeah. That's more Tableau related. Yeah. So Henry, uh, I think you should uh, look for, um, I think the Tableau marketing team can really answer this question for you. Um, I actually have one question. When you mentioned that um, you should um, uh, so, uh, get feedback from your work, mm -hmm. and sometimes people would come to me uh, for feedback, and I'm sure you've had a lot of, uh, you had to give a lot of feedback. So my question is, how do you give feedback without discouraging somebody from uh, really going out there to to want people to give them feedback? Because Sometimes you might have to tell people like what they are doing doesn't really need best practice. They need to change a few things and it can, it can sometimes be discouraging. So how do you get feed, uh, give feedback in, in 
exciting to be sure. Yeah, no, it, it can be challenging. So helping with Makeover Monday for six months with those biz reviews, we came across you know, this time and time again, um, and it, it is challenging. So I learned a tip from my friend uh, Fee Gordon, who's based in Australia. Um, she she suggested that when you give feedback, you start with a positive. So you say you start off by saying, you know, I really like how you've perhaps done this or you've done that or this chart. Um, and then you follow that up with, I suggest that you maybe rethink this thing or do this slightly differently or check your numbers here. Um, so that way you're not saying, you know, this is good, this is bad, but you're, you're calling out something that you like that's a positive and then following up with an area for improvement. I think that's a really good way to structure feedback. Uh, that's awesome awesome uh so the last question i think somebody's asking about calculations um this you can you can send separately to um um to the uh, to sarah right. separately um uh, somebody wants to know about grand total calculation but um anyway. okay if you've got any like long like technical questions i suggest putting them on the forums because you know there's a really yeah. active community on there and people will get back to you uh, and yeah. at least point you in the right direction Okay, thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you uh, so really, much. really appreciate your session. And um, if we can get access to the uh, slide later on, that would be awesome as well. Yeah, I'll share them with you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so um, uh, we had this insightful section from Sarah. So we will jump next to um, um, Tuan to also give us uh, his uh, start up to the community. Um, so uh, let me see if I can show. Okay, so Tuan is already sharing screen. Yeah, so Tuan is also um, the manager of Tableau Magic. Uh, he's also a Zen master. Uh, he's the founder of TableauMagic.com. If you haven't used this blog, you are missing out on a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, that's where a lot of magic happens. So he's the uh, only Tableau magician we have in the community. So uh, Tuan, this is all you. All right, thank you for the introduction. And hopefully you'll find this talk very interesting. Although I have two primary objectives, so hopefully I'll be able to hit both. My first objective is that no one falls asleep. That's always a positive. And the second objective is that hopefully you'll learn something about me, you'll learn something about my journey, and you'll take something away that you could apply to your own journey. So, the worst part of the slide, I always talk a little bit about me. So my name is Tuan Huang. I am from London, England, as you can see by the beautiful UK flag. I am a huge Tableau fan. So huge might be an understatement. I'm a super huge fan because I spend hundreds, if not thousands of hours per year, dabbling in Tableau, playing with it, seeing how I could break Tableau and what are the different buttons I can push. As mentioned, I am the founder of Tableau Magic. We will go into the story of how this came to be. But right now, it's a community resource. It's free. I post or try to post two or three, maybe four times per week. All of this is done in my own free time, just for fun. I'm also a Zen master. I was blessed this year to be invited to be a Tableau Zen master and to to some part represent the company and to represent the community and to support others in growth. So this talk is about my journey in Tableau. I'm a big believer that we all walk through the same path. We're just at different stages of our journey. And I don't believe that my journey is any different from anyone else's. I think we all have the same milestones, the same realizations, the same thoughts and feelings. So in this talk, hopefully by talking to you about my journey, you'll kind of be able to pick some stuff up, understand some of the decisions I've made and apply some of what I've learned to your own career if you're just starting or if you're earlier on in your journey. So this belies my age. My career started in 2004. This was a time before Tableau. I did not know what Tableau was. I just graduated snot-nosed kid that is just ready to tackle the world. That was me. Initially, I had a choice between web development and business intelligence. I obviously knew what web, in, web development was. Everyone was excited about Java.net. I left university with this enthusiasm. 
But then something happened. I discovered what business intelligence was. And my mentor at the time said, Tuan, don't think about business intelligence. Think about an intelligent business. That's what your job is, to make businesses more intelligent. As such, I spent eight years in the field of business intelligence. This included reporting, ETL, data warehouse, building enterprise infrastructure. I also am quite a journeyman in my career. I believe that I've been working right now for about 16 years. I'm on job number 17, 18, I think, something along that ballpark. But in my time, I have used SAP business subjects. I was actually a certified architect. I've also used Microsoft, so from the old suite to Power BI in the new age. I've also used a lot of open source business intelligence tools from Pentaho to actually Bird. So I've really stayed in the field and I've kind of used the full remit. Interesting thing is that I heard about Tableau in 2007. For those that are working in business intelligence and data analytics, there's a lot of tools that are flowing around. Sometimes you'll pay attention, sometimes you won't. I would always encourage you to dabble. And I made a mistake because I did not dabble in Tableau. I saw it as a toy at the time and I never touched it again. Until 2012. That's when I started looking at Tableau, when I started kind of seeing the potential of Tableau come through. I think the key was that a lot of tools were not keeping pace with modern developments, with where data visualization was going. And Tableau is, and still is, the leader in data visualization in my mind. So I started experimenting with this tool. And I'm sure some of you might be doing it yourselves, experimenting, getting your feet wet, the key is I started using Tableau professionally a year afterwards in 2013. Funny story, I was offered an interview for a job. I did not really know Tableau well enough. I played with it, but this was a interview for a job at a huge commercial bank. So obviously I did the thing that most people would do. I'll say, absolutely. I'll see you on Monday. And at the same time, I went to Amazon, I bought a book. It was delivered and then I read it through the weekend. That was my true learning of Tableau because I realized what could be done, what was the art of the possible and how much I actually liked the tool. So it was one of these weird accidents where I fell into Tableau and it just felt like a really natural match. That book, by the way, is by Dan Murray and it's called Tableau Your Data. And I would always be thankful for that book because it pretty much kickstarted my career in Tableau itself. As with most things, I started as a developer, as a delivery consultant. So building Tableau dashboards, delivering dashboards for others. This is quite common when you're starting off in Tableau, is just to build. The clients will have a requirement, they will come to you seeking your expert advice. And that was where I was learning the tricks of the trade because through building various dashboards for different clients, I was also researching. I was understanding the business domains, how you can visualize data better, because prior to Tableau, I was focusing on data and data extraction. I was more focusing on reporting in the traditional sense, as opposed to how do we get insights into users to get the aha moments coming quicker, to get the points of inspiration coming out to get the time between data and action. How do we actually improve upon that? So I spent a lot of time delivering. And then I landed a job where I was no longer a delivery consultant. I was no longer just building Tableau dashboards, but I was managing a ta Tableau capability, which sounds scary. And at the start it was, Essentially, that was managing all aspects of Tableau within an organization. And if you ever have the opportunity to do this, I would highly recommend it. Because in this situation, I had to then look holistically. I had to work on infrastructure. I had to work on security. I had to bring everything together. 
as a conductor would to get the orchestra to play beautiful music and get the organization to use Tableau in an amazing way. So there were so many different aspects there. Also at this point, more interestingly, I made a transition that some of you will go through. As you get more experience, you go from building to enabling. And that was a pivotal moment in my Tableau journey is that from building Tableau dashboards, which I still do as a hobby, I became more about enabling, helping people learn, helping people take those steps, answering questions, building out that knowledge base within our organization and within multiple organizations. Then another pivotal moment happened. While at this organization, I was asked, funnily enough, I was asked because I did not want to go. I was asked to take a week off of work, which is something that I generally don't do, to go to the Tableau conference in Las Vegas. Now, most people put their hands up and said, obviously you want to go. I actually rejected this because one, I did not have the time. I was managing so many projects, but as fate had it, my director drew a line in the sand and said, you're going. And I'm forever thankful for that because once I was there, by the way, Tableau Conference, Las Vegas, don't be silly like me, go. If you get an all expense paid trip, go. However, it was during this conference that I wrote my first ever Tableau blog, which funnily enough was internally or well, initially written for my organization, which was just a summary of the keynote. What are the new features coming out? What are the new items coming? What, what, what can we be excited about? And yeah, that started me thinking about how do I actually write for the wider community, not just for my organization, not just keep my learning to myself, but how do I do more? That whole desire to do more, as with most things, you will keep on learning until you get to a point, and then you might want to explore further. If you're like me and you're curious, I like to explore outside of the box. I like to push because I like to know what the limitations are, whether or not it's my mind, it's my body. I always like to push. And therefore I started looking at some advanced techniques within Tableau. And I came across drawing and polygons. If you've not seen this yet, it's the process of putting several points on a page and then drawing a line between them and essentially filling in that shape. So you can create very interesting data visualizations that are not out of the box. But as a philosopher once said, and I can't remember who said this in the Tableau community, but Tableau is a canvas. If you think of Tableau as a canvas, you could do anything. And what I started doing at that point was to reinforce my own learning. I started writing. I wanted to put myself out there, even though I was nervous, I wanted to put myself out there to be challenged, for people to look at my work and challenge me so that I improve, so that I could get better. The people tell me that, by the way, Tuan, I like what you've done. However, have you thought about doing it in a slightly different manner? So that reinforced my journey. The same way as today, you don't need to write articles for that. Publish your data visualizations, publish them on Tableau public, send them out and get some feedback. For the most part, I think apart from a few really obnoxious people, the vast majority of the community is really, really nice. They will help, they will give you positive feedback. They will work with you because as a community, as a family, we all help each other. And that gave birth to some of these interesting tutorials that I wrote right at the inception of my blogging. And most of these are not best practice. You might've seen some of these around. The one in the middle is a radio bar chart. Funnily enough, I called it Tableau Rings because I didn't know what this was called at the time. So I just put it out there. But the key is that this started a journey which helped improve me and helped improve those around me. So I thought it was worthwhile to do. So, that was my age of Tableau learning. Then something very interesting happened. Between 2015, when I wrote my first blog, 
to 2018, I had only written 29 blogs. If you think about it, that's basically a blog a month, give or take, which was my initial target. I wanted to have a rhythm, have a frequency. I wanted to really keep at it like anything that we do. You can get a six pack by going to the gym intensely, but to maintain it, you need to continually do. And that's why I wanted to write continuously to further my skills, to push my imagination. And therefore I decided to create Tableau Magic for various reasons. My philosophy is always to build a platform as opposed to build something under my own name. So my initial blog, which still exists, is my full name.com. I wanted to create a platform called Tableau Magic that anyone can contribute to, anyone can write blogs for, and that one day I might want to disappear and let someone else take over. So I created this platform. The goal was to explore and share new techniques. Again, if you find out something new in Tableau, share it. There's Twitter, there's the online community, social media is a wash where people are interested and continually learning. So I want to share new techniques. I wanted to build a community of people like me and people of like-minded nature. The key that I always say is find those people in the community that you really got on well with, that you share common cause with, that you just click with, and just use those as the basis of your relationships within the community, as you would in real life. So have an open mind, meet people, connect with people, and see what happens. But this is what I wanted in terms of Tableau Magic. So I, when I wrote this, I actually had to double check because it's quite an insane number. But as I said, since 2015 to 2018, I wrote 29 blogs. After that, till today, I've written or produced 251 tutorials, 49 of which are videos. Now, it's for me, it was insane, but this is how I have learned, how I've learned to be faster, more efficient, how today, if I see any form of visualization, pretty much I will know how to create this. I will know what the techniques are, and then I just need to do a bit of the maths, and it has really contributed to my speed and efficiency with Tableau. The website itself, since inception, has, I'm hoping it will reach 1 million hits by the end of the year. Fingers crossed it gets that way. It's about 50K a month, so probably will, but 780,000 page views and 200,000 users worldwide. So it's not, I didn't expect this to be perfectly fair. I just did what I wanted to, just to have fun. I had a few friends in the community that we banded together and we kind of joked around, shared ideas. And this is what came of it. Something that I always find very nice to see is there's not a day that goes by where I don't get tagged on a social media platform of some shape or form, where someone has used one of my tutorials or where someone reaches out to me to discuss and chat about different visualization techniques. And again, this is a part of the journey. And for me, why I am today is to try to help others. I do like designing, I do like exploring, and I do like trying new things. So I do typically build dashboards just for fun. And I think this is what Sarah touched upon is that find data that you enjoy. As you can see, I'm a football fan. I'm also a political fan. So a lot of my visualizations that I build for my personal entertainment and growth are based on those data sets. I typically try to source the data myself. So I I call it data discipline. So I get the data myself and I will try to build something fun. But also I always try to push as much as I can and try to do different things, try to have as much fun as possible. Because I think that's what would help you and what has definitely helped me in my journey is to have a lot of fun, to try stuff, to, yeah, try stuff that might be inappropriate, but learn from it. I did receive the invitation this year in February. I have to admit it was a surprise phone call because I didn't think I did enough to actually merit 
this invitation. But it came in, I believe, late January, and I was told that you had to wait, or I had to wait until the public announcement before I talk to people. It was probably one of the hardest things I could imagine. But a lot of people do strive for being a Tableau Zen master, and I think it's a great target. The main thing is I always say with targets, use a target as an excuse for growth, as opposed to a target for the, you know, for the sake of hitting that target. Targets are just a star in the distance that you can walk towards and just try to get as close as possible. But yes, it was a very nice moment to become a Tadro Zen master. Since then, I have continued to work within the Tableau space. I've worked with Tableau product managers to kind of review early versions of Tableau. I can't share any of this information, but and look at pre-alpha upcoming releases to kind of have some impact and influence and have my thoughts shared on what should go next, which is a blessing. I've also been supporting at Tableau events. So such as this one, I typically speak two or three times a month now for some strange reason. So it's, it's a blessing because I get to talk to people like yourself, hopefully inspire some of you. I was also the first round judge for Iron Viz. So that was an amazing experience alongside Sarah and several others. It was just look at the visualizations in Iron Viz, the amount of passion that goes into the community, the amount of output and the increasing quality of the work. It's absolutely amazing to see. and also participating in TC20. So I don't know if they've announced it yet. Oops, so I think I've got some repeat here, but yeah, I have to emphasize again, supporting user groups and supporting the community. At the moment, I'm mentoring close to 20 people in various shapes and forms at various stages of their career. Again, I'm looking to start a few user groups in the near future in the UK and also TC20, if you don't know, this is happening next month. As I said in my talk, one of the key things that's happened is that attending Tableau Conference in 2015 really inspired me. And that allowed me to start this entire journey, to start blogging. And it really has changed my life for the better. I'm guessing the key is now I wanted to share my journey because most of you will walk a very similar path. You'll get involved, hopefully. You'll build your career. You'll go from dashboard development to managing infrastructure to consulting. The question is, what is next? And I think the key behind this is that we don't know. No one knows what the future may hold. However, the main thing is not about where you go, but who you go with and how much fun you have while doing it. So engage with the community, find your friends, find your family, find people that you can enjoy this journey with, have as much fun as possible. And the key is that there are many steps and many people like myself that have been in this industry for more than a decade. And we're always willing to help. We're always willing to share because chances are there are people that are further on in the journey than us, the people that are further back. But the key is that we're all human and we we'll all like to have fun and enjoy life. And that brings me to the end of my talk. So I hope you found it interesting. I was a bit nervous, so I did speed up a bit, but do you let me know if you have any questions? Uh, Tuan, thank you very much for the insightful session. Um, so my, I, let me kick off the questions. I have one question you mentioned you wrote 251 blogs after 2018 and i want to find out about your work ethic how do you combine writing all those blogs uh, coming up with all these advanced charts and then doing client work as well like what's your process like yeah so for me my process is very simple is that actually i'll give you an example i was at a restaurant recently and i looked at the menu and there was a data visualization that as the logo and I just took a picture and I saved it to my phone and I've kept it for one lonely cold day that I want to tackle. And that's typically how I approach most of my blogs. I will see things that I find interesting. 
I would see visualizations in magazines, on TV, maybe a futuristic movie, and I'll just take a screenshot or I'll take a picture and then I'll just put it into my to-do list. And when I have spare time, which is not too often, I will try to tackle these blogs and just try to write it, try to build it. I think for me, the key is that well, I can hack away at the visualization very easily, but I will need to refine it, make it as clean as possible before I release it as a blog. So it forces me to do that. Oh, that's great. That's great. That's awesome. Um, uh, so we have, uh, okay, there's one question uh, in the chat. It says, how does one become your mentee? Um, to be honest, I think like most things is that it's just a matter of timing and connection. It's yeah. not a process. It's not a, by the way, can I pay you to do this? It's all about connecting with people and finding that connection. Sometimes I've just met someone at a user group. We've just had a few beers. We've gotten well. You know, I like what he's doing. He likes what I have to offer. And it just, it's a natural match. I don't think finding a mentor mentee relationship is about skill per se. It's more about experience and the connection. So I'm actually friends with all my mentees. And myself, I have about six mentors that I go to when I have tough decisions. Okay. All right, thanks for the uh, answer. Um, any other questions for Tuan? Um, okay, that, that way I think let me ask one question. Okay. Okay, I would I would want to know, you see them his blog is Tableau Magic. So why Tableau Magic? Is it like he he felt what he was coming up with was was something no one knew in the community or it was like he he discovered them out of nothing, like it just happened. Why why Tableau Magic? and not any other name. Um, to be perfectly fair, I actually bought the domain name about five years ago, so a lot longer before. I was going through a web development phase and I just decided to check to see what Tableau names were available. And I have like five or six, most have expired now. But when I decided to create a website, I looked through the domain names that was cool. And I thought Tableau Magic, so I thought, why not? There was a lot of internal debate because I think it's a, it could be construed as a bit obnoxious, the name, but I thought, why not just go for it? What's the worst that can happen? So it's not to do with the type of content because I do have beginner tutorials on the website itself. I think it was just a name that kind of was catchy. It could stick. And I was more importantly, I could get the .com. Awesome. Uh, that's another question for you, Tuan. Somebody says, uh, Rich, uh, Rashid says, do you do actual magic outside Tableau? Yes, I, maybe in, <laughs> in terms of your client to work, maybe. I am actually trying sleight of hand. So I'm trying to learn that just to improve dexterity. So card tricks, disappearing coins. So I'm trying, <laughs> but I guarantee you it is not easy. It requires a lot of finesse. Yeah. yeah, a lot of practice. Um, uh, another question uh, from Abek, who says, uh, do you need to have strong skills in a particular area to be able to be great at, uh, on Tableau? Uh, does anyone from any background, can anyone from any background learn and be great at it? Yeah, I think the key thing for me from a personal level is that it depends on what you define as being great at Tableau. So great can be it can be anything and everything. However, for me, I think there's two areas of this is one, can you flourish in a career? That's one aspect of it. And the other one is, can you have loads of fun and just enjoy life with Tableau? I yeah. think for the most part, anyone can enjoy life with Tableau. I think and data and analytics is here to stay. I think we're always going to be looking at data and we're always going to be, we're only going to become more data driven as time goes by. In terms of a career, again, it splits into multiple areas. One part is regarding data. So 
one part is regarding building dashboards or business analytics. It depends on what you gravitate towards. But I think that a Korean Tableau can offer something to anyone. The key is to actually find what you really enjoy about Tableau and try to push in that direction. Lean into it, so to speak. Okay, um, Lawe, let me add to this. I think okay. with a big quiz question, I can use myself as an example because I also didn't have any data background. I came from a hospital, a health background, but now I'm using Tableau most of the time. So you don't, you don't really need a particular background to be able to be good at Tableau. Once you enjoy using it, once you enjoy working with it, I think you can go very far with it. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Thanks for the uh, addition. Um, thank you very much, Twan, for this uh, really, really uh, interesting session about your background. And also, we'd like to say thank you to Sarah uh, for also having the time to spend with us. We know uh, both of you have really, really busy schedules, so we really appreciate it. Um, so we would like to thank you all for attending the conference today. And um, also, we want to encourage you to register for the uh, Tableau conference, which is uh, coming up in October. Uh, it's free, so make sure you register. There's a lot to learn from it. Uh, also, we'd like to say, uh, if you have any suggestions for us, or you want any feedback of how to run our sessions, uh, you can just contact any of us uh, on this list and uh, send us a message. Um, also, um, uh, our next uh, user group meeting, uh, you can find information about that from our official page. Um, so I'll put the link up on, um, so you see, you see this on, uh, on our social media pages, so you can uh, go into the groups and then you can subscribe and then you see when we have uh, our next events. Um, um, do we have any more additions, Philip? Or is Nana back in the group? I don't think he was able to join yeah, us. I think Kofi is back, so he can in, uh, give a okay. brief introduction of himself. Kofi, do you want to say a few things before? Um, Kofi, are you with us? Uh, anyway, um, so uh, if there are no additions, then we'd like to once again thank our, our speakers today. They uh, did an awesome job uh, letting us know about their journeys. Uh, the video will be Okay, I think I need to unmute Kofi so that he can speak. Do that real quick. Okay. Kofi, can you speak? Kofi? I think he's... Uh, I don't know what's going on with Kofi because I've unmuted him, but he's still constant to... Um, okay. Uh, I don't... I can't seem to be able to unmute him. Anyway. Okay. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, so we are spent on time a little bit. There's another session following up with ours from ours so we uh, need to close up um, um, anyway uh, thank you all for attending and we will you will see the video up on YouTube um, Tableau uploads it to their YouTube channel so you see the uh, video up if you have any questions for uh, the panelists uh, you can contact them uh, separately we have uh, so for um, uh, Sarah Bartlett you can find her on Twitter as well at Sarah Loves Data uh, you can find her Tableau public profile as well. You can type her name in and you can find her. Uh, for Tuan, uh, his Twitter is at Tuan1000. And you can also find him on uh, Tableau public. And you can also uh, find his Tableau magic uh, page. So once again, thanks you all. And we will update you when we have uh, the next meeting date. Thank you. All right. Thank you. session.